For this surface anatomy video, we're getting Thor Radical by looking at some of the bony landmarks of the chest. To do that, we'll be adding the landmarks to this photograph, which you can download from the links below. First, let's start with a couple of the most prominent bony landmarks, the clavicles or collarbones. These bones form that horizontal line across the top of the chest. Laterally, they articulate with the scapula, but medially, they attach to the sternum that flat bone forming the front of the rib cage. Now the sternum is a single bone, but consists of three parts. The head or manubrium, the body, and then a ziphoid process, also sometimes called the ziphy sternum. At the top is a concavity known as the jugular or sternal notch, and you can feel this between the medial heads of the clavicles. If you move about two inches inferiorly, you should also find a rough line running across the sternum. This is the joint between the head and the body. Moving to a lateral view of the sternum, we can see that the head runs obliquely, but the body is more vertical. So where they meet, there's a slight change in orientation that we call the sternal angle. You may also hear this referred to as the angle of Louis. Now, we're not actually sure which Louis this joint is named after. Wikipedia offers three likely candidates, but I'd say it's fine to simply imagine it named after your most loved Louis, whether that be King, Tomlinson, or Theroux. Whoever you name it after, the sternal angle is a key landmark in the chest, and one we'll look at in more detail later on. Finally, at the inferior end of the sternum, we can add the ziphoid. This is a small cartilaginous structure that projects just below the inferior attachment of the ribs. Speaking of the ribs, let's add our rib cage to our illustration. Now for this video, I won't be drawing every individual rib. Instead, I want to focus on the overall shape of the cage and then pick out a few important details. If you do want to draw from ribs though, please remember this important principle. Ribs don't run horizontally. Instead, as they travel anteriorly, they move inferiorly and ultimately attach to the sternum at a lower vertebral level than they start. So for example, the second rib starts between T2 and 3 posteriorly, but finishes between T4 and T5. To add our rib cage, we'll start with the costal margin. This is the lower border of the cage, and is normally pretty easy to see or feel. Anteriorly, it starts just above the ziphoid process, then sweeps downwards as it moves laterally. Superiorly, we have the thoracic inlet, bordered by the first ribs. These ribs attach to the manubrium anteriorly, but as they head backwards towards the vertebra, they pass underneath the clavicles. This makes it pretty difficult to see or feel them. To add the lateral borders, we can just draw a gentle curve, passing from the thoracic inlet to the costal margin. Now we have the overall structure of the rib cage, we can add some more details. For example, most ribs attach to the sternum by a costal cartilage. These start off narrow and get increasingly wide. So if you add an oblique line to either side of your rib cage, you can roughly mark out the position of these joints between the ribs and their cartilage, what we call the costochondral junctions. Remember the cartilage of ribs 1 to 7 articulate directly with the sternum, and we refer to them as true ribs. However, ribs 1 to 8 articulate with the cartilage of the costal margin and are known as false ribs. Sometimes you'll need to identify specific, specific particular ribs or the intercostal spaces between them. To do that, you can use the sternal angle. So if you find that angle, then move laterally, you should be able to feel the attachment of the second rib. Once you've got this, you can use it to count the location of the other ribs. Or you can use it to locate intercostal spaces. So the first space is above the second rib, the second space is below it, and so on. The sternal angle can also help you understand which vertebral level you're at. So if you trace a horizontal line through the angle, it should meet the vertebral column between T4 and T5. Similarly, the jugular notch is found at the level of T2, and the ziphoid is normally around T9. Those are some of the major surface landmarks of the chest. Once you're comfortable with these, you can use them to identify the location of the heart and the lungs. If you want to find out more about that, then check out either of the links below. But otherwise, thank you for watching, 
Take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.